Today is my most ambitious DIY portable power station project to date. I'm going to take all of this and turn it into this, a nearly 10,000 watt hour, 3,000 watt split phase massive power station. First we're going to talk about the core of my beast here and that is a Sun Gold Power 3000 watt 24 volt split phase inverter. Now I bought this as a backup to my main system but my main inverter is rock solid so I haven't had to use it and it's just been sitting for a year so I thought why not build something. So this is going to power everything. So it's very versatile. It has a way to hook up the split phase 240 here which I will probably hook up. I'm definitely going to hook up this, which will be a 20 amp, 120 volt circuit um, outlet. Next up is my batteries. These are two batteries that uh, just aren't quite good enough for my main system, so I pulled them out. This one is already set up as 24 volt. Uh, you can see it has a BMS on it for those who aren't familiar. Um, these are 3.2 volt, 200 amp hour cells that I put together in series connect to a BMS and that gives me a 24 volt nominal battery. For those of you that are more advanced and you're wondering, well, why am I taking two 12 volt batteries and putting them in series and then connecting it in parallel to another 24 volt? Why don't you just take a, you know, 24 volt BMS and tear them apart and make one battery? Well, the problem is, is these terminals here are really shitty. I think these are Eve cells and they're really shitty and they always strip out so I can't take the thing apart again uh, it just it won't do it anymore so I'm gonna have to do it that way it's not optimal by any stretch of the imagination but that is what I have to do next up I have a kick butt MP Everett 100 volt solar charge controller that'll be able to bring in a little over a thousand watts of solar into the system this is a little hub that um, lets me connect my MC4 solar panels to it. These are fans that I'm going to use to cool the system. Now these are 12 volt fans and I learned this the hard way. Uh, you need to step it down. I know that is really obvious to anyone with a brain but uh, I learned that the hard way that you can't hook up 12 volt fans to a 24 volt homemade power station. So um, I have a step down that'll take the 24 volt, turn it into 12 volt and let me power these fans. This is what I'm going to hook up on the outside that'll let me plug in my standard 120 volt receptacles. Um, I may run something so I can hook up a 240. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet, but I'm definitely going to have a way to hook up the 120 volt 20 amp circuits. And it also has some nice USB stuff. Over here is just kind of overcurrent protection and switches and fuses and stuff. And wire, of course. I'm going to be using a lot of two gauge wire. Some of this smaller wire, which I think is um, 8 gauge, is going to be for the charge controller. But most of this is 2 gauge or bigger. So next up is the terminal fuses. Because I'm going to have two batteries in parallel, each one will have to be fused. These are Blue C fuse and fuse blocks. They are excellent. Highly recommend them. Um, I have a variety of different bus bars. Uh, these are this one's 250 amp. This one's 100 amp. I may just make my own because this is a little on the light side. I'd rather have everything over oversized. This is a really good switch that'll let me turn the system on and off. An excellent switch. If you do buy a switch like this, they call a battery switch from Amazon. Do not get the cheap ones. Get the nicer ones. The cheap ones are crap. Uh, I bought one. I found out the hard way. Uh, you have to get the nicer ones. They're a little bit more expensive. But uh, the hardware on the back here is just much bigger. The cheap ones, they just, they're just they just too small. They're not going to be able to take the rated uh, current or, or voltage even. Uh, they're just junk. Then I have a variety of um, different liquids that I'm going to use. Uh, liquid, electric tape, liquid electrical tape, which is really good for putting on everything to... Make it so it doesn't conduct. Then I have the Harbor Freight um, thread lock, which is really good to make sure things don't move around because this will be portable. I'm going to be putting this in a box and it will be portable. It's not going to be like in an RV where it's going to be constantly bouncing around, but it is going to be moving enough that I want to make sure everything is locked up. I will try to use nylon nuts as much as I can too. I find that those are much better than 
the locking washers. So that's the overview of all the components. Everything is stuff I had. I didn't have to buy anything other than this step down, which is about 10 bucks. Um, like I said at the beginning, these batteries are just batteries I pulled out of my main system that just are not up to snuff anymore, but are still plenty good for a smaller backup system. These fans and other components are ones I had. I had them in a smaller DIY portable power station, but I wanted to build a bigger one. And all of this came out of that system too, so I'd pretty much be able to reuse all of it. So other than this, I didn't have to buy anything. This is all stuff that I had on hand. So it's a no cost project. This thing is a monster. It's 3000 watt split phase, low frequency inverter. So we should be able to power anything short of, uh, you know, maybe a central air conditioning unit. But other than that, and it might even be able to power that. Short of that, it's gonna be able to power anything. Pump, any kind of inductive load, uh, air conditioners, anything. It's a, of course, pure sine wave. Uh, really nice unit. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get this thing going. I'll show you every step of the way, all the good and the bad and my mistakes. So if you're interested in making something like this, stay tuned. Let's do this.